Welcome. Today I would like to talk about another game which I played in the Bundesliga. This time we played against the team of Mülheim. And we managed to score the first victory on one individual board uh, for this season. This was our team captain, um, Philipp Lambi, who managed to defeat uh, Volkmar Dienstuhl from the team of Mülheim. On board one, I had the chance to get a rematch against David Navarra, uh, rated almost 2700, Czech Grandmaster. And I had lost to him uh, last time in, the, in uh, the Bundesliga. And so I was happy to get a chance to possibly take a revenge. Um, I played with the black pieces and David opened uh, with e4 and knight f3. And this time I didn't want to go for another Philidor because I had the feeling that he would be quite well prepared against this. And so um, I was a bit reluctant to uh, again go for the Philidor and instead opted for the move knight to c6. Um, I was, I guess, mainly expecting um, the Italian, but I was also um, kind of expecting that he might go for the uh, for the Spanish with bishop to b5, and that's what, what happened. So against the Spanish, I had prepared a little bit. Um, I prepared the open Spanish, uh, which uh, arises after uh, this move order. Black takes on e4, and now um, basically the game is a bit more open, and uh, some pawns are exchanged in the center earlier on, and that's why it's called the open Spanish. Um, white goes for d4, absolutely normal. And now I cannot go for d5 immediately because he can then just take on e5. So I first kick away the bishop and now um, I play d5 in order to manifest this knight on e4. So it's too risky for instance to take here because then white could just go rook e1 and uh, get a big advantage. So after d5, uh, he took on e5. And I played bishop e6, protecting the d5 pawn, and this is basically the starting position uh, of the open Spanish. Uh, I had seen a few games uh, by David in the open Spanish, and um, his main choice was uh, in some move order knight bd2 and c3, which is also the main line. Um, and so I accordingly prepared for, uh, mainly prepared for, for that line. Um, but he surprised me here by playing the move bishop to e3. I had a brief look at it and I had some idea at least what I want to play against bishop e3 um, and so that's what I also did in the game. Um, yeah, bishop e3 is another, is another main line so it's not, uh, it's not by no means um, a complete surprise. Yeah, bishop e3, c3 and now black already has the option so one way that black could play is to go for um, knight c5 followed by knight d7 to go for this pawn. Um, and uh, another main line is the one I played, just uh, playing castles. And now after a knight b2, I again have the choice. So there are different uh, different lines here. Um, one is to go for bishop to g4, trying to directly exploit or trying to directly pin this knight. Um, the other one is to go for queen to d7. And the third one is the one that uh, I played in the game, knight, knight takes d2. I had not prepared this uh, very deeply, but I had the feeling it's a sideline, off a sideline, uh, so I was not um, not really sure how well uh, he would be prepared either. Um, he went for queen takes d2, which is I think the most logical move, and now I played uh, knight to a5, immediately challenging the bishop and uh, threatening to take uh, the pair of bishops. Um, White has different options here. He could go for something like rook fd1, just giving up the bishop, or he could uh, also play maybe the most logical move, bishop to c2. Um, but after bishop c2, um, it gets very concrete, so I can play knight c4, queen d3, um, threatening mate, and now g6. And black is um, attacking both the bishop and the pawn on b2. And now white has to decide whether either to go bishop c1 to protect a pawn or maybe to go for a pawn sacrifice along the lines of bishop h6, um, knight takes b2 and maybe something like uh, queen e2, um, rook e8. And I think there were some games played um, in, in, in this kind of position. Um, but I think uh, white has compensation, but not necessarily more. Um, instead, in this uh, position, my opponent surprised me by playing the move bishop to g5. Um, I was not expecting uh, that move, and it's uh, now a very different game compared to the pawn sacrifice line that we just saw. It's basically uh, now a more strategic battle. Um, yeah, um, if I take on b3, then the point is always he can take a takes b, and he gets uh, the 
um, a file. And now he can additionally exchange one pair of bishops. Yeah, so he gets rid of the pair of bishops and has the strategic advantage of the a file. So I didn't really want that. Um, but instead I played um, knight to c4. And now at least I get the half open b file. Mm, my opponent now played again in the most logical way. Um, I think white's main objective in this position is to at some point exchange bishops and then to establish this knight on d4. And if this knight is on d4 and it cannot be challenged by a pawn push to c5, then white probably has some advantage. So what he did was to play the move b2 to b4. Um, now, if I don't take it on passant, what happens is that next move um, he will exchange and then bring the knight to d4 and he will enjoy a strategic, um, strategic advantage. So I basically have to take and now go for c5 again, uh, trying to prevent him from playing knight to d4. At this point, uh, my opponent has to take an, an interesting decision. Um, so either he plays a bit more slowly, that's what he did in the game, or he goes for an immediate b4. But after b4, um, I think either first taking or maybe even the, inter uh, the, the immediate bishop to g4 could be a little bit annoying. Um, because now the knight doesn't really have any very nice squares. So for that reason, my opponent decided to take it a bit more slow with the move h3, preventing uh, bishop to g4. Um, but now um, I actually have a nice way of, uh, of equalizing. So um, there are basically two choices which I saw. These bishops are going to be exchanged anyhow, so either I take myself or I um, force him to take. But if I force him to take, he will take, and now he um, basically has a free move in this position. And if you compare now this position to the position which arises if I take myself, takes, takes, h6, and um, now after knight f3, I basically have a free move and I would I do not necessarily want to play the move queen to e7. And uh, therefore I thought it's better to, to play like this. Of course, uh, playing like this gives him the extra option of taking on e6, uh, but I thought this is a little bit uh, yeah too equal um, and uh, not ambitious enough for him. And I think this is, should be a fairly easy, a fairly easy draw. Yeah, so instead he kept one pair of minor pieces with knight to f3. And uh, now again, the strategic battle here is the same as before. He wants to get b4 in, um, get rid of this c5 pawn, and then establish his knight on d4. So what I have to do now is I have to be a little bit quick. And I did this by um, playing queen to b6, taking taking ones on b4, and now trying to uh, organize some counterplay with, uh, with this move um, rook to c4. So for instance, if he goes for knight d4 now, I can just go rook d4. This one is hanging, and I mean, if he exchanges, um, then it's clear that probably black is already slightly better because I have um, more active pieces. So for that reason, he did not play knight to d4, but rather went for rook to a5. Um, and here I started thinking for a bit, and I started calculating some long lines. Um, mainly the move rook to c4, trying to attack the pawn. Um, but now he has the move b5, and I was trying to, to see um, if I can make rook a to c8 work. Yeah, so he's pinning me, um, but I have this move rook a to c8. If he takes with the rook, I can just take the pawn. Um, and if he takes with the pawn, this was the line which I was mainly calculating, I saw um, that I have this rook c2, uh, and the queen is uh, tied to this pawn, uh, to, the, to the defense of this rook on, on a5, and uh, therefore maybe could go queen e1. Um, or alternatively, maybe even think about something like a7, and after takes uh, queen. Um, and here, okay, uh, one could calculate something like rook takes f2, and then to take on um, then to take on a8, for instance, um, and um, yeah, in, in the other line after queen e1, uh, I was thinking about rook c1, and now maybe just repeating. Or if I go for something like this, the computer even gives some line like a7 takes uh, check and rook c8, with uh, again an equal position according to the computer. But it was a quite long line, and in the end, I didn't feel 100% comfortable um, 
to go for this rook c4 option, especially because I uh, suddenly started to think about rook b8, um, which also leads to equality, but which is much more, uh, much more safe. Um, I'm threatening to take on b4 and it's very hard to protect it. So for instance, after rook b1, I could uh, just take on a5 and b1. So that's not really possible. And um, yeah, my opponent now just gave up the pawn on b4 in exchange for the a6. So he went uh, rook to a1 and now I can just exchange uh, pawns and queens. And we reach uh, an end game with uh, two rooks and one minor piece. And um, when I had tried to evaluate this position, I thought that black cannot really be in any in any sort of danger because my rooks are quite active. And I was even hoping to somehow get a push with this um, with this d-pawn. I went for the move uh, rook to c3, threatening to take on h3. And again, potentially reinforcing um, a pawn march to, uh, to d3. Yeah, and so now my opponent has to, has to take a decision um, regarding the pawn on h3 and uh, also regarding this potential pawn march. So I think if he goes for something like king h2, maybe I can really start running. Um, so I was getting slightly optimistic here, but my opponent uh, found a very nice way to steer the game towards, uh, towards the draw, just playing rook to a4, um, giving up the pawn. This was um, yeah, a complete shock to me that it's... Uh, it's seemingly so easy. Um, yeah, so I took and I took the pawn. Um, but now uh, for the pawn, he got this very nice and active knight on d4 and uh, f4 in the next move and thereby definitely um, enough counterplay to make a draw. Should be six. And now he went for rook a6, attacking the bishop. And it's slightly awkward what to do with this bishop yeah, because I don't really have any really obvious nice squares for the for this piece. So I now decided to go for um, rook c1 and rook e1, trying to attack the e5 pawn. Um, if he takes right away, then at least I win a pawn. So that's probably not, not working. But instead he went for the move f4, just having a very um, nice setup of his pieces and sufficient activity now. Um, to basically force a draw. I should be, of course, even a little bit careful not to uh, to run into some f5 at some point, but um, yeah, with the move rook e4, I now basically force uh, mass exchanges. Um, he's forced to take on e6. And um, yeah, now he plays um, a very strong move, uh, king to g3. Um, if he took on, on e6, at least I can try to push this end game. I mean, in the end, these two pawns will get exchanged and I have two versus one. Of course, this should also be a draw, but at least I could try to push for a little bit more. But after king g3, there's not really that much I can do. Um, and I now played the move uh, g5. The logical alternative maybe could be king to f7. And I was trying to calculate it a little bit during the game and I thought, okay, after rook a7 check, could either just go back, but then he has just a perpetual, or I can run forward. But in this case, um, maybe the easiest is even to go for king f3 to um, prevent king f5, or to really go for this um, rook to e7. And uh, then if I want to play for more, I have to play in a slightly risky way with d4, um, giving up this pawn because after king f5, at the very least, he can um, just repeat moves again and it would be a draw. So um, for that reason, after king g3, I played the move g5 and I offered a draw, which uh, my opponent accepted. Um, how would the game have finished? Um, so probably not with f takes g because then at least I get the e5 pawn. This should also be a draw, but it's a bit more complicated maybe for him. But uh, I think what he planned and what I also saw was just to go for rook takes e6. And now after takes, uh, takes, let's say, rook f5, something like this, takes, 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 we reach a completely um, simplified position and um, yeah, we can just agree to a draw. Well, I think uh, this game was uh, pretty 
correct overall. So I think it never really left the drawing margin. Um, my opponent didn't really play the most ambitious way in the opening. Um, and um, yeah, at the end, I had, a sl had slight hopes of pushing a little bit, but um, yeah, he just uh, played it um, quite safe and, um, and managed not to give me any sort of uh, chances to be better. So in the end, I think it's just a, a well-played well played game where maybe White was not super um, aggressive in the opening um, and uh, afterwards both sides played it uh, fairly well. Well, uh, that's it for today and um, see you next time for a very, very crazy game from the same Bundesliga weekend. When you have stress, play chess when you fall on your ass, play chess for a real deal, for Christian seal.